In the last few lectures, we covered cell-mediated immunity which involves T lymphocytes. Cell-mediated immunity fights against intracellular antigens. They kill infected cells, tumor cells etc. But there are many pathogens, which multiply in the extracellular spaces of the human body. These extracellular spaces are protected by B lymphocytes, which are responsible for humoral immunity. In this video lecture, we will understand role of B lymphocytes and the basic structure of antibody. B lymphocytes originate in bone marrow, and they also complete their maturation in the bone marrow. After the maturation stage, these cells are released into the blood. They keep recirculating between lymph, blood, and secondary lymphoid tissues. When these mature B cells recognize specific antigens, they get activated. This recognition occurs via specific receptors present on B cells which are known as B cell receptors. Once activated, these B cells proliferate and differentiate into effector B cells and memory B cells. Effector B cells are known as plasma cells which are antibody secreting cells. They produce and secrete antibodies specific to the antigen recognized by the B cell. Antibodies are glycoproteins. The basic structure of antibody resembles Y-shaped molecule having two antigen binding sites and a stalk known as FC region. These antibodies circulate in the lymph and blood. From there, they reach the site of invasion by the pathogen. They bind to the pathogens or antigens and activate defense mechanisms that lead to the destruction of the pathogen. Antibodies are also known as immunoglobulins. This is because they belong to a group of glycoproteins known as globulins. The term immune reflects that these glycoproteins play major role in immunity. The basic structure of all antibodies and the structure of B cell receptors is same. So, B cell receptors are also immunoglobulins. The difference is that, B cell receptor is a membrane bound immunoglobulin. Whereas, antibodies are secreted immunoglobulins. Let us now study the basic antibody structure. All antibodies have a same core structure. It consists of four polypeptide chains. Two identical heavy chains designated as H chains. And two identical light chains designated as L chains. As you can see here, heavy chains are the longer ones and light chains are the shorter ones. The term heavy and light refers to their molecular weights. Heavy chains have more molecular weight than light chains. Now, since these are polypeptides, the N-terminal of this polypeptide chain is present at the tip end, C-terminal is present at the base of each polypeptide chain. As you can see in this image, these chains are assembled into a Y-shaped structure. Each light chain is connected to a heavy chain via a disulfide bond. Here. This yellow line is representing a disulfide bond. The heavy chains are connected to each other via two disulfide bonds in the mid-region. Besides these disulfide bonds a number of noncovalent bonds are also present which keep these chains together. The mid-region of antibody has considerable flexibility. This region is known as the hinge region. The main advantage which this region provide to an antibody molecule is the ability to adjust to different spatial arrangements of antigens or epitopes. In other words, hinge region make possible the rotation and bending of antibody molecule. 
The stalk of this Y-shaped antibody molecule is the stem region, also known as FC region. To each heavy chain, short carbohydrate chains are attached. These carbohydrate chains serve many additional functions such as increasing the solubility of immunoglobulins. Before going into further details of antibody structure, let's have a look what we have studied just now. These are the two identical heavy chains and these are two identical light chains. Each light chain is attached to a heavy chain via a disulfide bond. The two heavy chains are linked to each other via two disulfide bonds. Mid-region is known as hinge region and this is the stem or FC region. Short carbohydrate chains are attached to each heavy chain. Here you can see how 3D structure of antibody looks like. Let's study more about light and heavy chains. Light chains As we said before, these are the two shorter subunits of basic antibody molecule. Each light chain has a molecular weight of about 25 kilodaltons. And each contains about 220 amino acids. In humans, there are two types of light chains. Kappa chain and lambda chain. They are similar in structure and function, but they are coded by different genes. Kappa chains are encoded on chromosome 2 and lambda chains are encoded on chromosome 22. It is important to note here that, each antibody molecule produced by a B cell, will either have kappa or lambda light chain, but never both. In humans 60% of light chains are kappa and 40% are lambda. Heavy chains Heavy chains are the longer subunits of the antibody structure. Each heavy chain has a molecular weight of about 50 to 70 kilodaltons. And each heavy chain contains about 440 amino acids. There are five types or classes of heavy chains in humans, all encoded on chromosome 14. These five classes are designated by lowercase Greek letters, gamma, alpha, mu, delta, and epsilon. They are also written as G, A, M, D, and E, respectively. Each light and heavy chain contain two distinct regions. Variable regions and constant regions. Variable region refers to the first 110 amino acids of the N-terminal region, in each heavy and light chain. These regions are so called because, the amino acid sequences in these regions have great variability. These regions are designated as, VL in each light chain and, VH in each heavy chain. It is the variable region of a light chain and a heavy chain, which together form the antigen binding site. So, there are two antigen binding sites in a core antibody molecule. Further, the variability of amino acid sequences in these regions, is localized within certain areas. Since, these areas consists of variable amino acid sequences. These areas are known as, hypervariable regions. They are also known as complementarity determining regions. Abbreviated as CDRs. This is because, these regions together form a structure which is complementary to the shape of specific antigen bound by the antibody. Let's say this line is representing first 110 amino acids in the variable region. The CDRs are represented by blue color. Scientists have found that there are three CDRs in the variable region of each chain. 
These are designated as CDR1, CDR2, and CDR3. The intervening sequences between CDRs or hypervariable regions are known as framework residues, these intervening sequences have restricted variability. Now, as you can see here, the CDRs are the regions which actually interact with its specific antigen or in other words, they form the antigen binding site. These CDRs are brought together when, the antibody molecule folds into its native conformation. In this image, the three blue color lines. In each light and heavy chain is representing the CDRs. So, now we understand that, antibodies can recognize diverse types of antigens, because of these hypervariable regions. The region beyond the variable region of both heavy and light chain is known as constant region. They are so called because the amino acid sequence in these regions shows little variation among antibodies. There is a single constant region in each light chain which is designated as CL. Now, recall that light chains are of two types, kappa chain and lambda chain. These chains differ from each other by minor differences in the constant region of light chain. Constant regions in heavy chains vary form 3 to 4. This depends on the antibody class and it is the constant region of heavy chain which forms the basis of this antibody classification. In a particular class of antibody, all antibodies have almost same constant region, but constant region of one antibody class is different from the another class. The constant regions of the heavy chains are designated as CH1, CH2, CH3, CH4 starting from the end terminal of the chain. Finally, each variable and constant region in an antibody molecule also has at least one disulfide bond. These are internal disulfide bonds.